ஹாய் சார் குட் மார்னிங்
Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Raghi. Uh, first of all, uh, really sorry for the delay, guys. I had an internet issue. So finally, I think it's resolved. Uh, apologies for the delay. So let me get started. Okay, so how many of you have uh, Power BI desktop, guys? Have you installed, have you tried to do anything uh, with Power BI desktop? If anyone is not having Power BI desktop, uh, can you say no in the chat? So that uh, I'll have a clear understanding that who has Power BI desktop or not. Sir, I need to install. I haven't installed yet. You haven't installed, sir? Okay. Yes. That, that's fine. We'll do so it So you go to this website, sir, which is pobi.microsoft.com. So let me okay. get in the chat even. Sure. So you can... No? Okay. If you go to this website guys uh you can download this yeah and the installation process is quite simple yeah even I, yeah, i'll share this file with you all you can go through this file and you can complete the installation guys so we are going to use power bi desktop which is absolutely free you don't have to pay any amount so once you download and if you start using it it will ask you initially it will ask you for sign in even if you don't sign in, that's okay. For practice purpose, still we can use it, guys. That's absolutely fine. So then, so this is about uh, Power BI sign up documentation. Yeah, I'm going to share uh, this file also with uh, everyone. I'll put these two files in the chat. So you can use this. So this is different. Now let's come here, which is, so for today, let me get started with uh, exploring Power BI desktop, guys. So we have two things. One is Power BI desktop and another one is Power BI uh, Pro license. Yeah. So when you have Pro license, I mean, the difference between Power BI desktop and Power BI Pro license is, if you have Pro license, you will be able to publish it, guys which means you can share your content, what you have prepared with others. But with Power BI Desktop, even if you don't have license, still you can do all the things apart from publishing. So that is the biggest advantage what we have with Power BI, guys. See, if, if I compare straight away with Tableau, Tableau comes with a, a trial period of seven days, one week. So once the trial period is expired, you can't use it. But that is the biggest advantage what we have with Power BI. Whoever is learning Power BI, they don't have to pay anything. Yep. So with that, let's come here. So now let me start from here, guys. Today, I'll start from here. Where is how to open Power BI desktop? So if you just come to search bar and if you say Power BI, so here you see the app Power BI desktop. And if you click on it, then Power BI Desktop will be opened. So people who are already familiar with all these things, please bear with me for a few minutes, guys. We have some freshers and who are just starting the journey with Power BI. So I'm trying to cover up even for them also. So basically, Power BI is a product of Microsoft and Tableau is a product of Salesforce. Now. Tableau and Power BI, so these two are the competitors. I mean, they occupy the majority stake in 
in the market, guys. Now, if you come here, so this is the Power BI user interface, what you see. The moment you launch Power BI, this is how you see the screen, guys. If you want to connect Power BI desktop with any of the data sources, you can click on get data. This is one way where you can connect your data sources with uh, Power BI, or you can see the recent sources from here, guys. Yeah, and you can collaborate and share. So if you want to buy the license, you can do it from here. And here you have uh, three things. One is what's new. Second one is Power BI block. And third one is forums. Anyone has idea what is this? What is new? Can somebody tell me what is the use of it? I guess if we get any new update or anything, so if we click over there, I guess we get the update. Absolutely, sir. That's true. But why specifically we are talking about this? The reason is Microsoft is continuously working on the developments in Power BI, guys. So every month you receive an update from Microsoft. So now if you want to catch up with the latest updates, simply you can go here, which is what is new. And you can see the latest developments, what's happening. And Power BI Block, if you want to start your Power BI journey, even this Power BI Block and Power BI Forums, both, uh, both will really help you a lot, guys. So let me close it up. If I close this, so this is the interface. Even uh, in last session also, we talked about this. So this user interface replicates pretty much with Excel. So. Now, let me go one by one here. Let me come here, which is, so explore Power BI desktop. Now here we have quick access toolbar. Yeah, how we have quick access toolbar in Excel. I mean, now some of you are coming from Excel background. They can correlate very well here. So here you see three icons, guys. One is, this is save, undo and redo. Yeah, as I haven't performed anything, undo and redo. Both are in disabled mode here. But so you can quickly access some of the features from here. So that's what we call as quick access toolbar here. Yeah. If you want, <coughs> you can take it out some commands or you can customize it, guys. This is pretty similar to Excel. Now let's move on. Then we have, we will start from here, guys. One is, you can see title. When I say title, can you see this? It is saying that untitled. So this is nothing but your title, yes? This is the name of the file. So what happens? This is like a very generic name, what you see here. So uh, when you save it or when you use customized names, you can see the name from here. Yeah, that's the use of this. Then if I come down, we have menus which is like home, uh, view, modeling. This is like old interface, guys. Even here, we have like insert, modeling, view, optimize help. So now using this, we have so many options. You can work with all these options. And going forward, we are going to discuss all these options, guys. Now, if you come down a bit, yeah. Even this file also I'll share with everyone, guys. So it clearly talks about all the menus and views. So now let's come to this part, which is views. Now, if you come here, so here we have three views. So first one is report view. Second one is table view. And third one is model view. Anyone has idea what are these things, guys? Even people uh, who used uh, Power BI earlier, can somebody help me to understand this, guys? What is report view and what is model view and what is uh, data view, table view? Report view is nothing but the dashboards like which we used to show up. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That's true. So is it like a dashboard? Uh, can we straight away say like dashboard? For any reports. Okay. That's fine. Then uh, what is the table view? Table view, it's nothing but like a 
or from which data that you are taking so okay and the model view is it's nothing but the how you have extract how we have load and you have transport like it is it is like a like a etl mode like a how you have load that part okay thank you so much uh yeah almost like 80 percent it is correct so here what i'm doing is let me get into one file guys Just give me a minute, guys. So I'll open one sample file so that you can clearly understand this. Okay, so I know uh, this doesn't look uh, pretty nice, but uh, let me use this file to explain this concept, guys. Now, uh, first thing, so we discussed that here we have different views and this whole place, uh, what you see here, so let me open another file. Okay, so now if you come here, let me give you a straight comparison here, guys. Uh, here we have some white space. Yep, this white space, what you see here, this is where we are going to place our visualizations or if I speak in Excel language, we are going to use some charts or maybe tables or something, whatever <clears throat> we are going to place in this place, guys. This place we call as canvas. Now, if you see here, this is where we placed our visualizations. Now, this we call as a report view. Now, if I go to table view, let me click on table view. Now, here on right hand side, you see what you see here is data. Basically, I have connected three files here. One is customers, second one is products, and third one is transactions. Now, if I select products, same like in Excel, how do you see the data? The same way here you can see the data, guys. Now, the last one is very important. So let me come here, that is model view. If you come to model view, this is where it makes difference, guys. Now here, now we have three tables. One is customers and another one is transactions and third one is products. What we have done here is we have created a connection here, guys. So from one table to another table, we have established a relationship. And in Power BI, this is one important concept, guys. We call this as data modeling. And that's what you see here. So basically, this is model view. And this is table view. And this is what report view. You create your visualizations or you place your slicers or tables, everything here, guys. So this is report view. Uh, hope I'm clear so far. Anyone has any questions, guys? No, then let me come here. This is very important thing what we have in Power BI. So we have so many charts here, guys, or so many visualizations here. Uh, here, you can use different type of visualizations from here. Even if you want, you can create your custom visual also. So using this place, now how we have sheets in Excel, the same way in Power BI, we have different, different pages here, guys. We have page one. If you want one more play page, you can just simply click on it. Then page two will be added. Yeah. 
So like this, you can add number of pages here. So now using these charts and by connecting this data with the respective chart, we create the visualizations. Okay, so then here, people who are familiar with uh, pivot table in Excel, they are pretty much familiar with this. So this is the table and these are the headers, what we have in the table. Now, the moment you select one of the visualizations, what do you do here is you play with these headers and you get the required chart, whatever you want, guys. So you create the visualizations by using these headers. So how we do drag and drop, the same way you can do the drag and drop here, or even if you select something, yep. So based on that, it will create a chart. For example, let me show you a very simple thing, guys. So here, what I'm doing is I'm taking a stacked column chart. Let me take this. So this is the visualization what I have taken. Now I want to play with the visualization. So then what I will do first, let me take something on X axis and something on Y axis. Generally, we take the categories on X axis. So now what I'm doing is let me take region. If I select this, it will come and sit on X axis. Please see this guys. Now, can you see this? It's been added on X axis. Now, let me come down. So here, what I will do, I'll take a value, which is a numerical value. Let me take sales. So if I click on sales, it will be, uh, I mean, it will kept in Y axis. Now, what we have done is we have created a small visualization here. I totally agree. We had some background work here, but even we will learn all these things, how to uh, create uh, visualizations and how you can apply custom these themes, all those things we will discuss going forward, guys. So let me come back here. Yeah. So then uh, this is a bit of terminology what we use uh, when it comes to the charts. Yep. So in Power BI, we call this as visualization. Basically, this, what you see here, some of sales by region. Yep. This is nothing but, so this, this is the chart title. So what you see here, some of sales by region. If you want, you can customize this. Then, uh, we're not displaying the lesson here. We will come to that lesson. So now this whole area, the whole area, what we have here, we call this as chart area, guys. Now in this, uh, let me do one thing. The best example, let me take something in Excel. Just using uh, Excel for a better explanation here, guys. Please bear with me for two to three days because I'll be using Excel a bit. Okay, now let me come here. So let me copy this uh, chart, what I have here, and let me add a new sheet here. Let me keep it here. Yeah, if I select this, now you see uh, a border here, and even in chart area, you see one more border. Now, in, uh, intentionally, I have taken this, guys. So what you see here, we call this area as plot area. But outside of this area, this whole area we call as chart area. There's a difference, guys, but the people often get confused. They say plot area and chart area interchangeably, but that's not correct. This whole place, what you see in borders, we call this whole thing as uh, chart area. Now, if you click here, this area we call as plot area, guys. Both are two different things. But I've seen many people, they wrongly use it. So this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. Can somebody tell me what is this? Like I have 2,31,885. What do we call this, guys? Does anyone know? What do we call that? Label. Which label? Data label. Text label. Text label. Okay. Yeah. So here we call them as data labels, guys. 
even you can keep data callouts also that also we can do but here we call these things in excel as data labels now even if you come to power bi we can show them but now right now i don't have data labels here but can you see the moment i place my cursor on one of the data points i see something can somebody tell me what do we call this you see region central and sum of sales it is displaying the value anyone has idea what do we call this tool tips thank you so much we call them as tool tips guys so if you don't hover your mouse you're not seeing anything but the moment you hover your mouse tool tip will appear here right now i'm displaying two things one is so i'm displaying what is the region and i'm displaying the value here but what you can do is you can customize this and you can do so many things even with tool tips guys we will discuss all those things yeah so this is what i was talking about chart area plot area yeah this is x axis y axis and these are data colors we'll come to this and data labels very important because especially when you go for comparison guys now if you see here you can clearly understand that so here we have the highest value on east yeah but if you are able to display the data label here you can see the exact value it gives you a clear understanding now it can't give you a clear understanding guys we can see that there is a difference but we can't figure out the exact difference here but if you display the data label here it will be very useful now let me come here so i have something here can somebody tell me what is this guys anyone has idea this is, is a pop up slicer thank you so much sir it's a slicer that's true that's the right word so what is the difference between filter and a slicer guys people who are coming from excel background can somebody tell me what is the difference between a uh slicer and a filter i mean uh, the slicer we, we change data with every uh, we can change it with every one i mean uh, with respect to one we can change it but with filter i think it applies the whole data it applies the whole data yeah yeah okay now i know uh, i'm playing with excel but uh, let me take this to different file guys so here first of all can i call this as table guys can somebody tell me no no isn't it a table no no okay how about others any guess guys sir it's a table it's a table how do you know that sir sir so first you... it's showing as a table design we have applied that i mean table format and uh, we have the headers okay then uh, if i have something like this sir then can't i call this as table yes we can still we can yeah yeah it's quite simple guys um, i know uh, we are talking about excel things here but here what we are doing is whenever you see this table design we consider this as table guys if you don't see this table design tab then it is not a table yeah so now let me quickly do that let me say convert to range then if you see here now i don't have table design here but it looks pretty like uh, pretty much similar to table only but now in excel language this is not considered as table guys now let me put it back so the moment you see table design we call this as table now why are we talking about this it's quite simple guys even if you see here we have some drop downs we call these drop downs as filters here yeah now if i want for example i want to see here the header is order priority if i expand this order priority and if i select critical then i'll be able to see the data for critical it is displaying only the data for critical now if you come to left bottom here you can see we have totally 8399 records out of 8399 records 
16,008 records belong to critical. So this is filter. I guess most of you are familiar with this. Then how to apply slicer on it, guys? Can somebody tell me? And can somebody tell me what is the difference exactly between slicer and a filter? Slicer is a contract one. Any any guess, guys? Slicer. And if you don't know, can you? Slicer can be connected to the multiple uh, pivot tables. Slicer can connect to multiple pivot tables. I but agree. The filter will be will be the for, only for the single one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I partially agree to that. Okay. Any other thoughts? So I'm just trying to build all the basics which are required <clears throat> to continue the Power BI session, guys. Okay, let's come here. So on this, let me draw a slicer or let me insert a slicer. So how you can insert a slicer in Excel is we have two ways. One is if you come to insert tab, there's a group called filters. So here you see two options. One is slicer and another one is timeline. I'll come to this timeline. Even we must know about timeline, guys. So let me click on slicer. If you click on slicer, then it displays all the headers here. Now, what I'm doing is, let me go to order priority and say, okay. Then you see some floating box, guys. This floating box is nothing but a slicer. Yeah. So now, uh, you can ask me, then what's the difference between a filter and a slicer? So filter, slicer, both are same, guys. But slicers are interactive filters. Yeah. So if I come here, let me click on same like earlier. If I click on critical, the backend data will be filtered for critical. Can you see this? But why specifically we are talking about slicer? Because the interface with slicer will be really easy to operate, guys. That is the reason. So whenever we talk about any dashboard, yeah, definitely we must know about slicers, guys. So that's what we have here, the same thing. So now what we are doing here, this is a slicer what I already uh, prepared. So now if I click on this, yeah, or let me select a slicer here, then these charts will be changed, guys. I hope you can see the value is changed. So basically what we are doing is, so we have connected the slicers with the visual and this uh, card. So the value will be displayed based on my filters here, guys. So this we call as slicer. But if you expand this, even you have filters also here. But this we call a slicer and these are filter slices. Even here, we have multiple options. Going forward, we will discuss all these things. Then how many of you have idea on timeline, guys? Anyone has idea? What is timeline? Is it really important to know about timeline? Come on, guys, people who have used Excel, can somebody tell me what is the difference between slicer and a timeline? No idea, sir. No idea? Okay. No worries. Uh, we are here to discuss the same thing, sir. Okay. It's quite simple, guys. When you go with timeline, slicer deals with text. But when you have date-related fields, you want to play with the date related fields. In that case, timeline is the best option, guys. Now, let me click on timeline. If, if you go through this, use a timeline to filter dates interactively. So now, if I click on timeline, basically, yeah, I'm so sorry. So we can't do this here. So I'll tell you why we are not able to do it here. But let's come here, which is let me go to pivot table. And let me go to insert. If you go to timeline, 
So let me click on this timeline, guys. So you see two uh, headers here. One is order date and ship date. Because in data, we have only two fields which are related to date. So what I'm doing is let me pick up order date. If I pick up this order date and if I say OK, you see an option here, guys. So this is the timeline, what we are talking about. Now, right now, it is displaying as per all periods and we are displaying as months. Let me change this to years. Yeah. So basically, I have the data from 2009 to 2012. Now, if I click on this 2009, values will be changed here. Can you see this? Now, whoever works with the data based on dates, this is a must know option, guys, timeline. Because whatever we do, everything is time bound. So whenever we want to display based on time, for example, let me give you a very general example, guys. Stock price. If you take a stock price and then you want to go for a deep drill down, in that case, you can use the slicer and timeline very easy. So now I want to see the values from 2010 to 2011. I'll just drag this. Then the data will be changed as per my selection. Yeah. If you want to clear the filter here, you just simply click clear filter. Then you'll be back to normal data. Any questions so far? Am I clear? No, sir. For me. No, are we good? Okay. Thank you. So we had a brief introduction on the UI, what we have in Power BI, guys. So let me give you a quick recap. So, sir, I have place... one. Yes, ma'am. Please yeah. go ahead. Actually, when we use slicer and when we use filter, sir, is, uh, uh, for that have... you have to give we me don't some have more time. Clarity. Right? Sorry, sir. Okay. No, you have to give me some more time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here, especially when you are giving it to end user, ma'am. So in that case, rather than applying filters, if you create a slicer, some something like this. End users, they feel really comfortable to operate slicer. Yeah. For example, let me come here. If I come to this dashboard, so here, this year, product category, product subcategory, and month, these are the filters. Now, for example, let's say uh, a CEO is having discussion, and now he is having a discussion or he is having a strategy meeting with the uh, sales heads. Now, for example, he wants to review only furniture category. Then what he does is uh, simply he comes here and if he clicks on it, then all these numbers will be filtered for furniture, only furniture. So here, the interface will be really easy to use. But you, we can't do this with filter. So if you want to do this with filter, you need to come to data. Yeah, here, you need to get into data. You need to opt it from here. But this is not uh, so interactive. That is the reason here we use filters for end user purpose. And related to this, we have so many concepts, ma'am. Please give me some more time. We will discuss all of them. Uh, am I clear? Did I answer your question? Sir, uh, the slicer of Power BI is very much interactive and uh, I mean visually pleasing, and the Excel one is not so good. Why do still Excel has this uh, feature, sir? I mean the slicer and the timeline. Why don't they just export that to Power BI and uh, don't have this? Sir, at the same time, everyone cannot afford Power BI. What if I'm working with a small organization, sir? They are, they want to have a dashboard, but they don't want to, or they can't afford Power BI. That's a very sm small organization. In that case, still they want to create a dashboard. So they have Excel 
and they are using the uh, Excel to create the dashboards. So if it is MNCs, uh, what you're talking is a totally different scenario, sir. I'm talking about small business. It's more like a cost cutting measure, sir. Absolutely, sir. So here also, this is a nice dashboard, sir. It is giving me some insights about my data or it's giving me insights about my business. Yeah. So if you want to use this dashboard, if you just have Excel, that's fine. If you want to share with your team members, you just prepare this file and you send it across your team. Then the job is done. But you create something like this. And if you want to share it with the, all the people in your organization, so, and if they want to use it powerfully, then they should have pro license. And each pro license, I mean, I'm talking about uh, in general terms, each pro license costs $10 per month. Let's say, there are 10 users, sir. 10 into 10, $100. But if it is, if you prepare the same in Excel, you don't have to pay that amount. Yes, sir. Uh, am, I, am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, sir. I totally agree. Uh, the dashboards or reports, whatever you prepare in Power BI, they look very pleasing rather than Excel. But even you can make it very pleasing, sir. You can apply a lot of uh, background things and you can keep a lot of images. We can do so many things here also. Sir. That again depends on the artistic nature of the analyst. Yeah, just for uh, demo purpose, we have created. So here, it's not uh, very pleasing, sir. I, I totally agree to that. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Am I clear so far? <laughs> Please don't hesitate to ask what are the questions you have. Okay. Along with this, I will share one more file in group, guys. So I'm going to share these three files in the group. Which is, one is installation guide and uh, uh, explore the Power BI desktop. And one more file is difference between Excel and Power BI. Why you have to move out of Excel and why you should use Power BI. We have a comparison here. This is just like apple to apple comparison. Yeah. So before starting the session, I request everyone to go through this case. Because as most of you are coming from Excel background, if you go through these points, it will give you a fair understanding the comparison guys. And people who are looking for change or career switch, for them, it will help you in interviews also, guys. So please go through the all these points. So I'm going to share these three files, guys. Basically, it's a comparison between Power BI and Excel. Yeah. So again, uh, sincere apologies. So I got very late today, but uh, tomorrow it will not happen, guys. So we will start exactly by sharp 8.30. So for today, please uh, bear with me. I'll stop here for today. But I request everyone to complete the installation. So once we are done with the installation from tomorrow, we are going to start with the most of the things in Power BI, guys. Sure, sir. Yeah. So that's all from my you, side sir. for today. So are we going to have the same timings from same timings, sir. Okay. A any problem with the timings? No, no, no. I am good with this time. Okay. We'll have the same timings. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Sir, just, just a minute, sir. I mean, may, may I know the difference between uh, Power BI and Tableau? I mean, the Power BI has been increasing rapidly since I think one year or so. What is the major uh, benefit with respect to Power BI other than the cost aspect, sir? Other than the cost aspect, sir. Uh, can I show this tomorrow? I'll uh, show you the oh. comparison, sir. Okay, so definitely. Yeah. 
thank you guys so have a good day so i'll stop here for today bye guys thanks bye sir thank you bye sir. guys